All right, so I designed this week's guitar lesson to give you some different ideas when it comes to playing rhythm. So I think this will be an eye opener for a lot of you when it comes to different chord voicings and how you play up and down the neck. So we're gonna be looking at a strum pattern and the percussive element with the right hand. That's one element of this lesson. The other element is the different chord voicings. And so the jam track we're about to listen to is a funk rhythm, but I don't want that to shape the way that you think about this lesson. That's why I started this video with me talking, because we're gonna be able to apply these funk rhythm uh, ideas to different styles. So we'll, we'll take a look at a slow country, for example, something very different. And I'll show you how you can take the elements we're about to learn in this and apply them to other things. So let's take a listen. Okay, so I have this week's lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're gonna go through all the different chord voicings up and down the neck for everything that I just played. Um, if you'd like to get the percussive part, which goes through the strum pattern, which is in the part two video, as well as the tablature and the MP3 jam tracks for this lesson, so you can practice putting it all together, you can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and then do a search for EP457. Okay, so before we jump into this, let's take a listen to the first part of this, and then we'll come back to it and break it down. Okay, so this song is played in the key of E, and there's just one chord throughout the whole thing. It doesn't really change, it doesn't go to other chords. And I did that on purpose so that we can really focus on this E chord and look at different ways to play it, E9, E9 and E6, and, and so forth. So it starts off, with that. Now, we're not gonna go through the strum pattern in this video, so that is in the part two video, but let's just talk through these different voicings here. So the first one is where you bar the first three strings on the seventh fret, and I use my ring finger for that, and then I use my index finger on the sixth fret fourth string to play this. Now that's an E9 chord, and that's just the top four strings of the E9 chord. Really, it would be like, if you were to play it in the proper chords, you would add in addition to that, you would add the seventh fret, fifth string. So the way that I like to think about this or just connect it to something else, uh, I'll give you two ways. One is to think about your E7 chord here that's using like the C7 shape. Where you've got your ring finger on the E note there, the seventh fret, fifth string. Um, you can look at the bottom three strings of that, which are the, which is this little like D7 shape here. And then you just bar the first two strings in addition uh, on the seventh fret, so you got you got this thing. Now you don't have to play the full chord because it makes it harder to slide it around, as we're going to do. So I play it like this, where you've just got the top four strings of that. Sometimes I see guitar players when they're doing this funk rhythm, they just do the top three strings, and that works too. That works just as well. You know, it's missing the one extra note, but you really won't hear it when you've got a jam track, especially with that low end bass covering all the low end stuff. So the diff different ways you can think about it, but we're gonna connect pretty much all of this stuff that we're about to learn to this chord shape. This is gonna be our foundation. It's all gonna make sense. Now this is an E chord, but we're using the A shape out of the cage system. I'm gonna assume you know what the cage system is. If you don't, I do have a course for that, uh, which is available to premium members. Just click on this start here button at the top and you'll, you'll be able to go into that course. But anyway, this is the E chord using the A shape. Now I want you to look at that E9 and connect that E9 back to this chord shape. So when I make this chord, and we're gonna come back to this in a few other spots, but when I make this chord, I've got one finger on the seventh fret. Now it's only on the one note there, uh, fifth string. But then I've got another finger barring on the ninth fret. So seventh fret, ninth fret. And I just use that as like two fret markers, which is two visual anchors. So when I play that E9, I can connect it back to that chord shape. That's just how it works best for me. You may find a, a different system for it. 
but I can easily find the nine chord based on that, that, that shape out of the cage system. Okay, so we have our nine chord. So we have this now. I just slid it down one fret and then back. And that's another thing you can do with these chords. You can slide it down one fret this way or up one fret this way. That's what, another nice thing about these little funk chords. Or you can go up. You know, it's just, it works either way. Now the next thing I played after that goes. So. Let's look at that. We're, we're barring the first two strings on the 12th fret. And then we're going to play the 9th fret top three strings. 7th fret top three strings. Back to the 9th fret top three strings. Now that should look familiar. 9th fret, 7th fret. We just talked about this, right? So hopefully this is starting to light up the fretboard a little bit for you when you see, oh yeah, that E chord using the A shape. You've got this little thing that you can do here. And, but, but first of all, we start with this and then we come into this. So this is just the top two strings out of your E chord. You can think of it that way. Think of your E chord in first position, strings one and two. Here it is again but it's just played an octave higher. 12th fret is a reset of where the nut is. You can also think of that as pattern one of your minor pentatonic scale. Right, the Chuck Berry stuff. Uh, so that's what I was thinking about when I played that. I came there and hit that, then this. Now this is an E6 chord, and this is an E9 chord. Remember, that's just the top three strings of your E9, but E6, E9. And I've talked about this in many other lessons, but whenever you're playing a six chord or a six triad in this case, you can always slide it down two frets this way, and you'll be playing the nine version of that same chord. So if this is an E6, you go down two frets, it's an E9. See, there's your E in the bass. E6, E9. There's reasoning behind it, but I won't get into all that, but just know that. But here's the big takeaway though, is it's connected to this A chord shape. So now when I'm playing that A chord shape and I've got the one finger on the seventh fret and one on the ninth fret, I've also got a six chord and a nine chord triad uh, right in that shape. So that little funk thing there, whatever you would call that, uh, you can see where that comes from and how that all works. Now I'm doing all of this over an E chord, but what if the song went to a G chord, for example? Well, you could just have to shift everything. So let's find that G chord using the A shape at a cage, which would be up here. And from here, I can get my nine chord. I can get my um, six to the nine chord thing. I can come up here and hit one, strings one and two. So I've got... So I've got all these little ideas for G. So I can do this in any key now. And so just kind of always bear, that's why I like to connect it all back to a chord shape because if you've got a reference point, you just move your reference point and then all this other stuff follows. Okay, let's take a listen to the next phrase and we'll break it down. Okay, so we're repeating this leg. The E9, that just keeps repeating. And then after that I went, into this little bit. Now, look. let's look at this. I'm barring the first three strings again on the seventh fret. That's the same as your E9, right? But the difference is I'm including the ninth fret first string. So I've got strings four, uh, three, two, and one, and I'm playing this. Now that would be considered an, an E13 chord. And by the way, if you don't know what that number means when I say like E13 or E9, that's covered in the Essential Theory course which you have as a premium member. So you can go again to that start here button and you can get to that course. But basically 13 just means it's the 13th uh, note from the major scale of E. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. You put that note in with your uh, E7 chord and then you get the uh, 13. Anyway, that's what's going on there. But this is another chord voicing rhythm idea that you can apply and look at how this lines up with your A shape out of caged. Hopefully the light bulb is getting brighter as you're starting to see this. You go, wow, I take that one A chord shape and I've got my nine chord, I've got my six chord, I've got my um, 13 chord. You've got all this stuff that I'm connecting to this one shape. And you know, you can throw in little uh, embellishments and that's what I did. So I took my pinky off, which brought me back to the nine chord. 
and then back up to it. So, uh, and again, we'll go through the rhythm part of this in the part two video, but that's what's going on there. So let's take a look at the next phrase. Okay, this phrase started off the same again with our E9 chord. And then it went. I love this. It's my favorite lick in the whole thing, just because I use this in everything. I use this in country, I use this in blues. Here's what's going on. We're on the 12th fret again. Should be familiar, right? We've already done that. Um, strings one and two. And then I come up here, so I'm barring that with my index finger, and then I come up to the 14th fret second string, and I hit that, and that's just an up, it's a down upstroke with the right hand uh, to play that. And I'll explain that in just a minute. And then we come all the way down here and do the same thing between the seventh fret and the ninth fret. Wow, there it is again. We're back to that seventh fret, ninth fret. This is another idea off of that A shape. So you have. Now this is just a little thing that I've picked up. I've seen funk rhythm players do it. Sometimes they'll slide like that, that's another idea. But basically, up here, you can think of this as major pentatonic scale pattern two. That That's one. That's how I think of it. So you've got your minor pentatonic pattern one, right? And then you've got your major pentatonic inside of that pattern two. And you've got those notes. That's where that comes from, to me. That's, that's one way to think of it. And then when you come down here, you've got the A shape. So you have, Right? So hopefully that gives you an idea there. Let's take a look at the next phrase. All right, so we're back to our E9 chord. The only difference this time is I went up instead of going down. So I went. Right? A little difference there, but wanted to point that out. And then the, the final response to that goes. It comes down here. Now I'm playing an E chord again, but this time I'm playing an E7 triad like this. So think of your D7 chord in first position, the one that one of the first chords you learn. Just slide that up two frets. And that would be an E7. Right? That's another way to do a, an E7. And then I come up here as an embellishment with my pinky to the fifth fret first string and then back to it. And so that's that whole first part of the song. There's only really one other part, and it has the same rhythm, uh, but the next part comes up here and goes like this. Let's take a listen to it, and then we'll break it down. All right, so this is one of my all-time favorite chords, and I use this one a lot. It's, an, it's another E9 chord, it's another voicing of an E9. Now this one I'm connecting to my uh, E shape. So I'm connecting it, that's the E chord using the E shape. But I connect this chord to that. That's just mentally what makes the most sense to me. So I've got my pinky on the 12th fret first string. My index finger is on the 9th fret second string. And then your middle finger goes down on the 11th fret 3rd string while your ring finger goes down on the 12th fret 4th string. Now, it seems kind of weird when you first do it. I remember when I first learned that chord, it seemed awkward. I remember thinking, how do you do that? But for, for whatever reason, this one just falls really naturally into the way that your hand is shaped, I guess, when you're, when you're grabbing it. And you'll, so you'll be able to grab this chord once you get com comfortable with it and familiar with it. You'll be able to grab this one easily. The thing is, you just have to know what, what to anchor it to. And to me, using your pinky to anchor it to that E note up here, E note, E9 chord. That makes the most sense. So if, if you wanted to use play an A9 using that, you just find your A note on the first string with your pinky, and then bam, there's your chord. Now this is the same chord that's used in Hideaway. I think of it as the Hideaway chord. In fact, I think Hideaway was done in E. And that was that chord. So if you listen to Freddie King's Hideaway and listen to the breakdown in that, you'll hear that chord. Um, okay, so. The only difference is I moved my index finger up one and I couldn't tell you off the top of my head what that is. It's just a variation of that E chord. Um, but that's just an embellishment that you can do with it. So you have your E9 and then you slide that up and then you go back. So all together you have. And then. 
I hit the open E string, the low sixth string, and just threw in this little kind of single line thing. Uh, and I've done this same lick in another lesson. Actually, the irony is I'm using, I was using the same drum track. For some reason, that drum track inspires that, uh, that bass line. I think I got that from Carol Kay, maybe. I don't know, something that I've heard her do. Uh, so, it comes down to the open sixth string, and then we're on the second fret. We go second fret, fourth fret on the fifth string, and then second fret, fourth string. And then we walk it back down. So those are the notes. These notes, by the way, are the E major pentatonic scale. And I've talked about this in several lessons. But when you're playing your E chord, just remember between your second fret and your, your fourth fret, you have strings six, five, and four. And all of those notes that I just played are the E major pentatonic scale. So you can use those as little fill licks. And so when I do this little, little Feel like there, it, that's how I was able to get to it, or I got to it quickly just because I associated that with this E chord shape. Everything is visual for me. It's all shapes, and you find one thing that you can anchor everything to, and then you just see what all you can pile onto it. That seems to work the best for me. Um, okay. Then we come back. All right, let's listen to the next phrase. Okay, so this one goes back to that same lick. And then I come up here and go. So this is kind of a repeat of what we've talked about. We're gonna bar the first two strings on the 12th fret. And you know where that's coming from now, right? From your E. Uh, but then I, while I'm holding that bar down, I come up to the 15th fret second string. And then I come down to the 14th fret second string. And then take my finger off. Play strings one and two again, and then back to the 14th fret, second string. So you have, that's the lick. I think of that lick as being made, or I'm sorry, minor pentatonic scale pattern one. That's just where all of that, all that kind of bluesy stuff is. And the bass line did something like that, or actually the keyboard, when I was playing the keyboard part, I did something like that, the, the, the little, as a fill. And so I thought it would be cool to just sort of mirror that with the guitar part. Um, anyway, that's what's going on. So then we go back. Repeat. And then the last chord was that E7, which we have already played here, using that D7 shape. And I played that just a few times, I strummed it a few times, and we go right back. And it loops right back to where we start. So when you're playing along with a jam track, you can just loop it there, you go back to the beginning, and you can go through the whole cycle as many times as you want. All right, I know some of you out there are saying, well, this is great if you're playing funk rhythm, but what if we're playing like a different style, like a slow country? Well, I just so happened to have a slow country thing in my looper pedal here. Now this is playing me playing a little chord, it's nothing spe special, but it's slow country and it's played in the key of C, but watch how we can use some of these licks. <laughs> Six to the nine chord. Right? Everything I've done here is a repeat. It goes up to the F. And back to your C. Right now, I didn't plan anything there, but it's it's even though the, the style is different, the tempo is different, cadence is different, I'm taking the same concepts. I'm playing the six to the nine, I'm coming up here and grabbing strings one and two for the C, and then, uh, you know, it works, right? It works funk, blues, country, it works over just about anything. Once you get these ideas and you can connect them to chord shapes, you can start using them in other things. All right, we'll see you in part two where we'll go over the uh, strum pattern.